Okay, welcome. Uh, painting day. So, uh, well, it's always cold in New York. It's, it's getting into the cold season of New York now, by the way. So you'll always see me wearing a scarf, um, especially in the studio area. It's, it's super cold. Um, but I'm finally getting into a uh, painting day. So um, let's see. So the most previous uh, session, I did this painting of the, this girl in this kind of like super angelic pose with her eyes closed, like kind of looking up a little bit to the, she's looking up towards her right, um, but it was to be like, it's, it's basically this angle here. Um, and it was really beautiful to me actually, and it kind of came together really nicely. And then over the weekend, um, I did some drawings without recording them. I kind of give myself the break of not recording over the weekend, but I'm actually still always drawing more or less. Um, and I did another version of it, like another rendition of it, and I was super impressed uh, with the, the gesture of the pose, and I guess like also a little bit with myself, and I don't mean that in like an arrogant way, but just I was kind of surprised with like how well it came together and how well I captured it. And it kind of inspired me to, to work on painting a little bit. Um, I've also been drawing now for like probably two months straight, and you know, I, I think I've said this before, I consider myself more of a painter than a draftsman or, or a uh, graphite artist. Um, so I am curious to uh, get back into painting and kind of take try try my luck or tr yeah try my luck in some sense with with this with this image here. Um, now because it's been two months, I don't expect expect things to be great. This is like one of the major frustrations of art is like you know you work on drawing gesture line and then you get you know some progress but in the meantime you know your painting skills have been diminishing and you, you're just doing your best kind of like bouncing around each of them trying to maintain like as high a level as you can across all of these different skill sets um, and it's really really difficult like I, I am always so impressed at artists that can bounce back and forth between for example um, painting portraits, painting figures, painting landscapes. And I mean, at the end of the day, like the argument is all painting is the same. Like it's all, you're always going through the same process, trying to capture the same types of things. Uh, but the reality is, is that there's like kind of nuance to each of them as well uh, that you kind of have to familiarize yourself with. Like, you know, you can get rusty on anatomy, you can get rusty on, you know, how you capture light in landscapes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting challenge that I think every artist faces in some, faces in some way. Um, but okay, so the idea here is to kind of first do like a little bit of a sketch. So this will probably, I'll probably only work on this painting um, for today and just kind of like block in some things and it won't be finished at all, but it will kind of give me a little bit of an idea of what I want to do. Um, and then tomorrow I'll actually start like what would be a final painting, but it's kind of good to give yourself like one day of like sketching with painting. Um, even though I've already done kind of two sketches of it with drawing, like I didn't, I have yet to try and tackle this particular piece or this particular drawing like image with, uh, with paint. Um, and so in terms of materials, um, I'll just be using two colors, three colors probably, cadmium red, ivory black, um, and titanium white. Uh, and that's generally how I start all my portraits before I put any colors in. You'll kind of see uh, how this, how, how I kind of work those out. But you can actually get a kind of like a nice range of flesh tones with just those three colors. Um, they're not super accurate or super close by any means, but it, it's enough that you can get kind of the lay in. And then once you have kind of established at least like regions of different types of flesh tones, then I go in and I actually try to like color match and add some more, add some more color to them. Um, so I'll probably get work on that strategy. Um, in terms of mediums, I'm using linseed oil, um, and then for you know cleaning the brushes off and, and thinning paints, I'm using just like a mineral spirits, like a paint thinner, uh, either Gamsol or uh, there's like a brand Da Vinci, super cheap brand that makes uh, a version of mineral spirits that works really well, like a paint thinner um, that works really well for for that. Um, and I think that's about it. And then I have various sizes of brushes that I'll kind of mess around with. And my, my approach will be uh, starting with kind of like, you know, uh, a drawing, if you will, with the brush, normally in a red color. Um, and then after that, kind of blocking in shapes. Uh, and I think the difference is like, it's a bit more, things are less precise when you're doing a painting. Like for me, I'll still try and approach it with like this 2D construction, 3D construction, uh, block shadows, mesh shadows, edges and half tones will still be kind of the same process, but also on top of all that is kind of like this continual refinement 
um, because the lines that you're making are not as precise, you're not as committed, you can always make changes and that's not always true for drawings, you know, like as you erase you kind of leave residue behind and it's kind of like, um, you know, it's a transient medium versus in, with, with oil painting you can always, always paint over and start over something. Um, that's one of the great things about oil painting. Um, I actually don't know if I mentioned yet that I'm painting in oil, so if that's the first time I mentioned that, uh, it'll probably be in the title too, oil painting. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I lost my train of thought here, but I think this is enough talking anyway. Let's just kind of get into it, and then we can do uh, kind of like a post-evaluation.
Okay, so kind of as expected, uh, it was a little bit rusty on the painting um, and uh, you know, just kind of trying to figure things out a little bit, uh, moving the paint around, pushing the paint around for the first time in a couple months. It took me a second to just like remember <laughs> how everything is, how to remember set everything up. Um, and so I'll keep continue to comment on kind of my painting process, including like the setup and, and like what tools I'm using and how I'm thinking about my different tools. Uh, but, but generally I think like this was a fine first little sketch for pushing the paints around. Um, I just kind of marked the values, like practice separating the values, uh, push the paint. If it was good enough, I would actually build off of this. Um, but there's kind of like a pretty glaring issue that I spotted right away um, for why I, like, I probably don't want to uh, commit to this. Um, which is that the portrait is like way too large for the canvas. I kind of went all the way to the edges and I think just in terms of like composition for paintings it's like really not very nice. It's much better to have your portrait smaller and like captured inside the space instead of moving to the edge. That's not always true. I've seen beautiful paintings where the portrait is like taking up 90% of the canvas space but for me personally like my aesthetic preference and my compositional preference is to have the, the drawing the portrait a little bit smaller. Um, so I will probably make that adjustment. Um, and then start over again using the same process, but hopefully, you know, uh, now I'm like a bit more comfortable with the paint, so when I come back tomorrow, it'll feel a little bit better, feel a little more natural, and I'll probably even get a little bit farther than I did today. Um, the nice thing is I'm using what's called canvas paper, uh, which is basically just like the type exact material that would be stretched over stretcher bars, but it just comes in a pad. Um, and it's a little bit thicker and the gesso is like a little bit thicker and that means that it's like it can be a bit more sturdy without being on the canvas and so I'll just flip it over. Um, I think I actually oper I think I actually painted on the non gesso side today um, because I was I mean I did I, I not intentionally actually just because I, I could feel it when I was putting the paint down it was like uh, taking more paint to get the same layering down um, which is actually kind of nice so when I flip it over now I'll be op working on the gesso side which is like you know, technically the correct side to operate on, but I mean, the, the only difference is like the amount of paint, you just have to put more layers on, on non gessive canvas and uh, which can be like a bit more annoying, but it, all intents and purposes, not that big a deal. Um, but I think, yeah, that's kind of my, my post-mortem on it. Um, that I think like more or less not putting a lot of judgment in, kind of accomplished what I wanted, which is just to kind of move the paint around and get this like first idea of what we're doing. Um, and then hopefully, you know, next week, this will be another, you know, I just did a kind of five, six day straight series, five part series. Um, this will be another one of those, but hopefully a bit more successful in the end. Um, and then after that, we'll kind of go right back into practicing. And maybe we'll have been doing some practicing of like color things, um, like things that are related to painting instead. Uh, but let's see. Okay, we'll see each other tomorrow.